Listen to that. Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and it's time. Today I'm going to tackle a subject that many of you have been asking me about and this is how to create killer 808 sub bass lines in Cubase from pretty much any 808 kick drum or any other kick drum for that matter. And I'm going to show you how to do it super easily with fluid glides and everything coming up. Okay, so I wanted to make this video a long time ago, but then Cubase 11 dropped and everything changed. Like seriously, Cubase 11 changed the entire video that I was planning to make about creating 808 sub bass lines. Okay, so let me show you because this is where the new sampler track shines. The new sampler track that we have inside Cubase 11. So, Let's get started. I don't want to talk too much. I want to create some sub bass lines today. So let's go ahead and take a sample. I have this Trap 808 loop here. Let's listen to it. So quite a few notes as you can hear. So this one we can turn into an 808 sub bass line. Now before I do this, I want to show you the basics of the new sampler track, okay? And to show you this, I'm going to take a bass note and I'm going to use one of the samples from the Night Call library that we have in Cubase 11, okay? I'm going to take this one. It's a nice and long... It could be a Moog, this one. It sounds like a Moog, but... That's not the point. Let's create a bass out of this, okay? This is not an 808 bass line, but I want to show you the basics first so that you can understand how we're going to create all those 808 bass lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and say create sampler track, okay? Very, very easily. And boom, now we have our sampler track right here. And now I can immediately start playing this on my keyboard. Okay, that's great, we could do this before with a sampler track, but there are a few things on this new version of Cubase 11 that allow you to create even better sounds, even better bass lines with any sample, and actually instruments out of any sample. So, this is good, but you see that every time I hit a note, you know, it re-triggers the note and this kind of gives it away that I'm using a sample. A real synthesizer wouldn't do that. A real synthesizer would keep going if I had a legato patch, okay? And it wouldn't sound exactly like that even if I didn't have legato on. So how can we remedy this? It's two clicks away actually. And let me show you how you do this. You just activate monophonic mode here, okay? That's number one. that helps a lot, but we're not quite there yet. The next thing you need to do is click on this button here, this legato mode. And this is a massive, massive thing with Sampler Track, the new version of Sampler Track 2. This allows you to not re-trigger the sample when you're playing legato. Let's try this. So if I don't play legato, I'm going to re-trigger the sample, of course. But if I play legato... Now, this is great, and you can actually create the glides here as well, okay? So I can just turn up glide. Okay, this gives you an idea of how you can use the sampler track creatively. And I'm probably going to do more videos on the sampler track because I think it's really, really powerful. Now, now that we have the basics down, 
let me show you how you can start creating 808 baselines, okay? So let's close this for now, and I'm going to go to this loop here. As you can see, this doesn't just contain one node, it's an entire loop. Let's create a sampler track out of this. My shortcut, I've talked about this in the past, is Shift Y, and when I do this, I create a sampler track. If you don't have a shortcut, just drop the sample into this lower zone here, okay? And it will do exactly the same thing, but shortcuts help. So, here we go. This is the sampler track now that we created out of this loop. It's exactly the same. Let's play it. Okay, now what we can do is I can actually go ahead and maybe find a note that I'm more interested in. Let's see. This is a little bit of a lower note. I like this one. Okay, so let's go here. And let's stream this. I'm going. I'm only interested in this note. Okay, and let's hit this new trim sample icon here. And there we go. Now we have a nice and neat sample. Good. Okay. What can we do next? The next thing that I can do is I can go ahead and turn this into mono like we did before. Okay. Nice. And then we can activate legato mode. Let's try this one now. Great. Now, most kick drums or sub basses, you know, they will be a little bit short. So even if you keep playing, you know, the sample at some point will run out and you will have to stop. But with the sample track, we have an option to loop a section of the sample. So the only thing we need to do is to find a nice loop point in order to make this sample last for infinity, uh, for as long as we keep the key press, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to activate a loop, a continuous loop, and it might be a good idea to turn on your snap to zero crossing so that you can avoid clicks and pops when you create your loop. So let's do this. And now, check this out. Now I can start creating my loop, okay? So I can go here, grab the end, and find a suitable spot where, see? There we go, see, now they match, see? Now they're out of phase. So this will cause a click, let's listen to it. This is not great. We can remedy this, of course, if you cannot find a absolutely perfect loop point, but in this case, I can just go like this and go closer and closer, and there we go. Now I have a perfect loop. Now in case you have clicks with your samples, you can try and help this with a loop crossfade here. Okay, see? This helps a lot. But I would suggest that you spend a little bit of time and find the perfect loop. That's nice. And now, as you can hear, I have an infinite 808 bass line. Let's add some glide as well. Now, there are two types of glide that you can have. You can have the normal glide and you can also have finger glide. Now, the finger glide is what I tend to use most of the time because the normal one, let's, let me show you the difference. If I play a note right here, Even if I don't play legato, it remembers the note that I played before and it creates the glide. Now, sometimes you might want this. But sometimes I'd like to have a little bit more control, so when I play disconnected notes, it won't do the glide. Okay, so now I have finger glide. And now the other thing that I can do is I can add a little bit of presence, a little bit of grit to that sound. How can I do this? Now with the new sampler track, I'd like to go ahead and explore the vintage mode. So if I click on this, I get this kind of vintage drum machine kind of uh, sound. Which is really, really nice. I really, really like this sound. And the next thing I can do is I can activate a filter. And now I can add some drive. Now, another very cool trick that you can do, if you have a sound like this, 
this is really nice, but maybe you want to have a little bit more attack to this. So, as you can see, this doesn't have a lot of transient, it's very, very short and it's not very defined, but it has a nice low end. So how can we create this attack? There is a very cool trick that you can do inside the sampler track that will allow you to do this. So all you need to do is go to your pitch envelope, go to your modulation here, and now all you need to do is go ahead and add a nice sharp rise in the pitch envelope at the very beginning so that we can create the transient, okay, the attack. So let's go here and I'm going to go like this and nothing happens. Why? Go and check out my other video on the sampler track, but very quickly let me show you, it's because we haven't added any envelope amount, okay? So let's go here. Hear that attack now? Now, this is a very, very dark sub bass line. If we want to enhance this, we have quite a few options inside Cubase 11. I would go straight away for the squasher, and that's because this can add a lot of character to the sound. So what I tend to do is I go to my squasher and just open the attack a little bit. Listen to that. drive yes nice okay so squasher can really add a little bit of thump well not a little bit quite a bit of thump to your sub bases now the other plugin that I love using is destroyer okay this is really nice if you want to add a little bit of presence to your sub bases let's try it out Let's turn down the glide a little bit. And another trick that I would always try and do with the sub basses is go to my sampler track and set my pitch bend range to 12 because then I can do these things. Now, if you want your sub bass to sound like a long 808 kick, all you need to do is literally go to your amp and then just go a little bit like this. Let me show you, go like this and then open the release quite a bit like this. And it doesn't matter that the sample is not long enough because what happens is this loop mode, it keeps playing while the release goes on. Yeah. Let's make the glide long now. A very important thing when you're creating bass lines is of course to make sure that you have the correct pitch so that you play the correct key on your keyboard. So most of the times the samples will give you the key. You can also try Vari Audio if you want to find the key of the sample straight away. But a very easy way to figure it out is, I mean, this doesn't sound like a C to me. It sounds more like a... It sounds more like an F sharp. Let's go here and I'm going to add the tuner that we have inside Cubase. There we go. So now let's try and play a C. So yeah, it's it's F sharp, it's, it's even flat. So now what I can do is I can start transposing. Let's go here and transpose. There we 
There we go. It's not quite there yet because it's not in the center, it's not C yet, so let's go and fine-tune it. I think we're there. Now I can play the correct notes on the keyboard as well. Most of the times you won't have to do this, but just showing you all the tricks, right? Okay, so we talked about how to drop the sample in the sampler track, how to make it mono, how to make it legato, how to add a pitch envelope, how to add a long release to make this, you know, long lasting bass lines, how to add a little bit of grit, the processing, destroyer, squasher, all these things contribute to an amazing sub bass sound. So now I'm going to show you how you can do the same thing with a simple kick drum. You know, very, very straightforward. So this is the sampler track that I created and it sounds like this. And this is a short 808 kick drum. And as you can see, I have the loop here and you can see that I've used the crossfades so that, you know, I can get a little bit of a smooth legato. And then if I add some drum. Oh yeah. yeah. Let's add the destroyer here. You know what? Let's add the squasher, why not? It, it is almost, is really rubbery, like a bone, like a huge kind of rubber. This started from this sample, okay? You can do it with any kick drum that has a little bit of low end, you know, you just need a little bit of a low end. And another thing that is important is that you choose, when you choose your loop point, make sure that there's no fluctuation in pitch, okay? That's very important. Don't choose a point where you have a, let's see, if I go here, See, this has a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of arc there with the pitch. You don't want to use that point where the pitch is not steady. Try and find a place where the pitch is stabilized, okay? That's a very important tip. So, okay, so I like this. Okay, now let's play something. So there you go guys, this is how you can create proper 808 sub bass lines inside Cubase 11. Because if you don't have this legato thing, it's not exactly the same, it's not quite right. So now we can do this properly and the best way possible inside Cubase. If you enjoyed this video and if you learned something, you might want to consider subscribing to the channel. And not only that, please hit that bell notification icon because if you don't do that, it's like you don't have legato mode on the sampler track, okay? <laughs> so hit the like button, guys. You know what to do. Let's spread the love. Let's share how many amazing things you can do in Cubase. Until next time, guys, have fun and I'll see you in the next one.